Peace. I just wanted to take a moment and build briefly about the recent police violence that resulted in the murders of Elton Sterling down in Louisiana and also Philando Castile in Minnesota and talk a little bit about some of the things that I've recognized and also what we can do to practically bring about some effective solutions to lessen and willfully end this police violence in our communities and just throughout America as a whole. Um, these murders happened two days after the United States had celebrated its 240th birthday, you know? And as of right now, we're halfway into 2016 and it's been over 500 murders at the hands of police violence and that is entirely unacceptable. One of the things that I've seen on social media and just in casual conversation with people is the overwhelming fear factor surrounding police violence. People are afraid for their lives. They're afraid for the lives of their children, their families. And that fear has paralyzed people to the point where they feel powerless about bringing about an effective change. And this fear is false expectations appearing real. And one of the greatest adversaries towards fear is knowledge. Because the more you know and the more aware you are, you lessen those false expectations and make it real in terms of what you can actually do to bring about effective change. So that is the first thing that we need to do. We have to eliminate and alleviate this fear. And one way that we can do that is to become more knowledgeable and aware of what we can possibly do to bring about change. We can, number one, reference our ancestors study various different movements of the past and present that are using effective strategies to resolve these type of incidences of police violence. And when I say police violence, I'm talking about any type of dynamic where you have a people who are being oppressed. It doesn't necessarily have to be the police. You can study various different societies and see how they dealt with tyranny, you know, and ignorance <clears throat> and studying that helps you learn effective strategies of what people used and what they did in order to overcome that adversity. And we have many, 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 many incidences and events in our chronology to show how we were able to succeed where we faced adversity. So that's number one. We have to eliminate fear. Number two, the next thing we have to do is to be more unified. We have to be more unified. In my city and other different places around the country, Oftentimes, we only get together around tragedy and trauma. This is when we see each other, when we talk to each other, when we're willing and able to come together as one. We have to be more unified on a consistent basis because being more unified on a consistent basis, we can be able to look out for one another. And that is the third point that I wanted to make. We have to be willing to protect ourselves and each other. We have to be willing to do that. And in order to do that, we have to be more unified with all of these different police violence videos that we see where a bystander is recording it. How often do you see a bystander recording a bystander intervening? I'm going to repeat that. How often do you see a bystander recording a bystander intervening? We rarely see that because a lot of the people are paralyzed with fear. And I would like to see more videos like that. I would like to see more videos of people intervening on behalf of their own people. We have to see more of that. And in order to see more of that, we have to have more unity. So with that unity, we have to be able to come together, not around tragedy and trauma, but more on a consistent basis. Now, the last thing which is vital, last thing which is vital. We have to be in a position to sacrifice our lives to rear loving, fearless children. We have to be in a position to do that because many of us are fearful, because many of us may not ever overcome that fear. We have to entrust others to be able to instill the love and fearlessness in our children to help bring about this change that we want to see. So that is the last thing that we have to be willing and able to do. We have to be willing and able to sacrifice our lives for the sake of our children who are going to inherit this society and be ambassadors of a better future. So I will. This was inspiring, empowering and educating and gave those of you some practical examples of what I think that we can do and help to resolve some of these instances of police violence that's going on. Another thing that I wanted to say.
before I close is there are a lot of us who are going to get together at our houses of worship and pray about this. There are going to be people who are engaged in their public officials. There are going to be people who say we need to vote. There are going to be people who are protesting. I wouldn't discourage you from doing any of that. But in the process of doing all of those things, never lose sight of the fact that we need to do this ourselves and turn towards each other in a unified way to bring about a change. We need to work with each other in order to do this. And appealing to people who have been historically indifferent and indignant about our issues, that has not changed many things. All you have to do is look at the chronological record. Look at how many times people have stepped in outside of us to change things for us. As opposed to us doing things ourselves. So like I said, I encourage those of you to come together in one with each other on various different fronts. The political process, praying with one another protest and do all of those things, but never lose sight of the fact that we need to just simply be unified on more of a consistent basis and be willing to protect ourselves and each other. And in protecting ourselves and each other, that may require us to have a philosophy of by all means necessary. We have to be willing to protect ourselves and each other. So again, thanks for listening. And I will that I gave those of you some insight into some of the things that I think that are important for us to do at this time. Peace.